Hey Matt, have you ever wanted to see what regret happens to look like? I've seen what regret looks like within the community numerous times, and it always involves a commentary. Well this could be no shock to you then, because I want to show you the result of an overambitious fool that convinced himself to release one of his episodic videos only and the repercussions of it. You know my video on Blaze the Movie Fan. You plan to make a commentary on Blaze the Movie Fan? No. Well, not in the context of this conversation. I already made a commentary on him a few years ago. Strange. I recall only 10 episodes existing in your catalog. You don't know about it? Fanning flames on Machoin Mons? I thought that was an error for a response video. Ha! That would have been the sensible decision. No, this is a video that came in the midst of a few Lado Can projects that saw the light of day. I wanted to show it to you since you apparently spent 2019 out of the loop. I see. You don't really have to. No, no, I insist. What's a good viewing between buddies, huh? Let's look back at the blight on my records. Nothing like waking up and not knowing what to do with your miserable life. Let's turn to my backlog of stuff that I had planned for the new year. Oh. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Ooh. Let's get to this one right now. I was just doing my normal thing on Discord when I was contacted by my target today, Blaze the Movie Fan. Commentator, reviewer, entertainer, he's been fairly around. He was expressing some concern over one of his videos getting some flack without anyone giving counters to it. I then said I'd look into it for him and dropped it into my backlog in the hopes of getting to it after I finished some planned commentaries. Since said planned commentaries ended up getting delayed, this wouldn't be fair the same fate. But we're here now, so let's get to business. We start with a video from Ember Reviews with what is a discussion on how the Pokemon anime has matured, citing the Sun and Moon anime for this point. Also, spoilers for the Sun and Moon anime, just throwing that out there. And Blaze seemed to make a video on it. That's what we have to work off of from a first glance. So, let's begin. Now I'm skipping into a minute in because it's just intro shit. has been written into a corner not by the writing staff but by the games themselves and this is just something that we're gonna have to deal with for this generation fortunately there's more than enough awesome writing and fun characters to keep our minds off of that so it is a minor complaint in the grand scheme of things but still one that should be taken notice of in the future whether this version of ash is a good character or not is still up in the air since the sun and moon anime is far from being over but i honestly don't see him changing that much or gaining any new and interesting traits to make him stand out as for right now while i am definitely enjoying sun and moon and the sheer level of fun that it's able to create i still can't help feeling that we've lost something truly important and fascinating about ash Boy, was I fucking wrong. No, you were pretty much right. Us Ketchum is far more fucking boring in this series than it is in any previous series. But hey, that's just my opinion. If you like the years in that series, that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion. So, nothing. That is all I can decipher from this interjection, Blaze. You cut into Ember reflecting on his work, but he contest the notion that Ash wouldn't be evolving as a character within the Sun and Moon anime by saying that Ash is actually boring in the anime. Let's ignore how you say this with no elaboration at all. I have two primary problems with this interjection. Its placement and its priority. Starting with its placement, Ash being one of the main focuses of the video, why would you make what could likely be one of your bigger points within the first minutes of the discussion? With little elaboration or without knowing Ember's sight in the slightest outside he had changed his mind. The best proper argument for whatever Ember is going to say would be to contest his reasoning. I say contest because while you can't debunk an opinion, you can question or challenge the reasonings or explanations to show any leaps in logic, inconsistency, whatever. You can't do that by carrying into someone's intro with a mild disagreement. Speaking of that mild disagreement, let's talk about my problem with your priority with this cutaway. Your eloquent point against Ash's possible development as a character is, well, Ash is born. Fun fact, a born character and a well developed character aren't mutually exclusive. You're going to have to show that Ash's development lacked death on click for this to be anywhere worth considering. And if that wasn't what you were trying to do, then good going. We have an irrelevant interjection that's even worthless on its own merit. Blaze, this is your first interjection. I shouldn't be blazing for impact this soon. If you don't like the art style, then that's fine. But judging it solely on that without even giving it a shot means that you're going to miss out on one of the most fascinating, exciting, and mature Pokemon stories that's ever been written. Yes, I said mature, and I mean it. And I want to use this video to show just how much Sun and Moon stands out from previous seasons in that regard, as well as how it has evolved into a strong piece of children's media in general. 
Now let's talk about the word mature. Something being more mature means that it's intended more for adults than it is intended for children. Not inherently. At the very least, not in the way Ember is using the word mature. Well, he's using it to say Pokemon is one more sophisticated and is willing to touch on relatively serious topics like Globe Within the Ward, Gleef, and I believe Abandonment. Yeah, I'm pulling from later within the video for half my point, but his use of the particular phrase how it has evolved into a strong piece of children's media in general. General. Could be enough to tell you that he's not trying to imply that Pokemon is going TVMA. Matter of fact, guess it's never brought up as a talking point in Ember's video. If you instinctual your answer is to say the anime is demographic, then you're already ahead of the game. <laughs> To briefly summarize my Ash Ketchum video if you haven't seen it yet, the original 275 episodes of Pokemon provided Ash with a complete and satisfying character arc, going from an incompetent nobody to a standout trainer over the course of three different regions. However, with Hoenn, Sinnoh, and Unova choosing to mostly reboot or stagnate his character instead of continue from where he left off, Ash as a protagonist began to grow stale and uninteresting, and as a byproduct, all of the narrative elements around him suffered as well. There is a good reason for that, because Ash Ketchum wants to start over when he gets to a new region. I mean that's clearly explained in the final episodes of the Johto region as well as the first few episodes of the whole region. I'm not sure how you could have missed that. I'm willing to believe your point here, though some clips or at the very least an episode title or two would have been very helpful. The thing about this point is, well, Blaze, I'm pretty sure it's possible for Ash to restart his journey in new regions without restarting him as a character. The complaint Ember brought forth was about how the stagnation of Ash's character was a problem for the stories of Hoenn, Sinnoh, and Unova, and even a detriment to other characters within those regions. Sure, you explain why Ash gets the self reboot treatment, but that doesn't mean it's done correctly or even that it negates this issue. Matter of fact, at least in this manner, this can be argued a cop out. Picture it as this. Ash restarts his journey by catching new Pokemon, meeting new friends, and battling the new gems with him battle hardened with each lesson he learned from his journeys in the previous regions, with his Pikachu that is also battle hardened. That's exactly what negates Ember's problems. You don't really give me a reason to see this as the case, so this really comes off as half an argument. <laughs> This were season one ash he'd be banging his head against the wall at the thought of having to waste time on something that wouldn't help him get to the next gym battle but sun and moon ash absolutely revels in these experiences he's learned to appreciate and enjoy the little things in life and how those things will eventually form a much greater understanding of himself and the world around him this is something that we got brief teasers of in x and y but never in as much force and quantity as in sun and moon sun and moon ash doesn't just love pokemon and pokemon battles sun and moon ash loves life and that's just really fucking cool. A story about someone who is happy all the time where nothing goes wrong doesn't make for a very good story in my opinion. In fact, it does make for a very fucking boring one. A conflict is needed in order for a story to be interesting. Now before any of you misunderstand what I'm saying, I am not saying that this applies to the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. I know there's a lot of conflict that Ash has to deal with in that series. But my point is, I don't see how someone being happy with life makes for an interesting story. Let me bot it by your admission, Pokemon isn't under this complaint you gave. Let me also bot it this complaint isn't congruent with what Ember was saying as talking about how Ash had developed into a character that seems to enjoy everything around him doesn't mean the story is without conflict. Instead, let me just tackle this point on its own merits. Well, Blaze, a story about everything is good and happy. I have no idea if such a medium exists where that's the case, but I guess if I could try to play devil's advocate here, maybe the journey of the character can be engaging, or just strong writing, or maybe the conflict isn't just caused by a person or a force and instead by a more in the story. I know this argument is rather underwhelming, but it's hard to argue something without any flame of reference. I had a feeling there was a bit more I could add to this interjection. Small tidbit about my recording sessions. I rewatch the segments I plan to interject to just before I record my lines on it for a more natural feel and reaction. 
It also comes in handy for moments like this where I start rethinking what I originally scripted. After some thinking, I took a look into this section of Ember's video and I just so happened to stumble upon the following. Life isn't just about one single thing like Pokemon battles. It's about the collective experiences you go through. And seeing Ash respond so positively to each new event further shows how much he's learned. And wouldn't you know, this section wasn't in your video. More about that when we return to normal though. What I'm focusing on is this. Even discounting my attempts at devil's advocacy, if you want a true answer to your quandary, it's in your source video. You just have to pay attention to what he's saying. Of course, most of this would have been impossible without another crucial element of Sun and Moon setting that inadvertently became off-putting to older Pokemon fans before the show even began, school. On a surface level, I can totally understand why including school in Pokemon would irk some people. A lot of the appeal of Pokemon is the fact that these young children can go on amazing adventures without being burdened with the responsibilities of schoolwork, so completely shattering that escapist fantasy could definitely have a lot of drawbacks. However, once again, that is not the case in Sun and Moon. Okay, here goes the point in the video that I disagree with the most. Look, if you like the school aspect of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, that's fine. But I couldn't disagree more. If I wanted to go back to school, I wouldn't be watching the fucking Pokemon anime. The Pokemon anime is supposed to feel like an adventure. That's the whole fucking point of the show. I'm sure that no kid would want to watch the Pokemon anime just to go back to school. The main reason why I hate the school aspect of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime is because of how fucking boring it is. Seriously, for most of the school segments, I'm struggling to keep away. Might be a bit of a nitpick, but perhaps you should be careful while you cut your footage. As it sounded like you cut Ember off while he was about to expand on this point. Now I guess technically you didn't, as all Ember says after your cut is... Because Professor Kukui is a great teacher. And perhaps you just wanted to make a point on the school setting right now, and I guess that can work, but the cut was very bizarre. Actually, this becomes quite significant when you couple it with how you've been skipping through the video without informing us, as it can lead to a shady result. Like, you couldn't even overlay some text on the video as you're playing it. Just gonna skip through it awkwardly. Hmm. That said, as for the interjection, it just amounts to you peeling your onion about how the Pokemon anime shouldn't have a school setting because it ruins the fun, I guess. And that's like telling you that a school setting doesn't automatically mean the fun and adventures will go away, especially when we're talking about Pokemon. You really give me nothing to care about with this interjection. Unless the school setting is in fact a generic one, spoilers and below show that's not the case, then I don't know what to tell you outside you're being melodramatic. This is a concept that I've been wanting to discuss for a while but haven't had the time to do proper research on, but the past half decade or so has seen a noticeable increase in anime where the school setting actually means something. This has been especially prevalent in Shonen Jump anime like Assassination Classroom, Food Wars, and My Hero Academia, and this concept will hopefully be getting its own video at some point, but we'll stick with Pokemon for now. Okay, I don't watch a lot of anime, so I don't know much about schools and other animes. But I do watch a lot of American movies and a lot of them take place in an elementary school, high school or a college. And the thing is, some of these movies are fucking awesome, so it can work. But it doesn't really work with Pokemon in my opinion. And now we have this to deal with. Blaze, in your last interjection you implied that a school setting wouldn't be appealing at all. And then in this interjection here you say a school setting can work. I understand you say Pokemon doesn't work for the setting in both interjections, and I understand that saying that school settings can work in general doesn't mean Pokemon isn't doing it incorrectly, but my problem with the flaming of this argument is that the distinction isn't clear. Without any elaboration of why the school setting does not work for Pokemon in specific, after saying that a school setting can be done well in general, despite your earlier complaint which did involve you bringing the demographics up as a point, it comes off as inconsistent and petty. What I find most interesting about the school in Sun and Moon is that it is in no way an academic learning institution. Textbooks and homework are rarely seen, and most of the lessons are taught out in the field rather than within the confines of the classroom. There are even several moments later in the series where Kukui won't even enter the room until the students have finished important discussions about Pokemon that they're having amongst themselves, showing that Kukui is dedicated to letting his students learn their lessons naturally and give them a guide hand when need be, rather than force the lessons down their throats. Alright, there are a lot of problems that I have with other teachers said here, so let's address them. First off, are you implying that teachers like that don't exist in real life? Not even close, plays. Like, I could at least maybe see how you could get mixed up from the mature thing from earlier. I'd have to stretch for it, but there's probably something to justify it. Here, however, Ember talking about how Kukui himself is a nice teacher because of his layback style is greeted with, Oh, are you saying there's no nice teachers in the world? I just... 
<laughs> because I can tell you for a fact that back when I was in elementary school, I had a very good math teacher who never forced anything upon anyone. Sure, we had to do some tests, but for the most part, she was very fucking nice. So a good teacher like that isn't that uncommon in the real world. Because using anecdotal examples to disprove a straw man nobody made is certainly how counter arguments work. Secondly, how does the fact that they go on a field trip make this stand out from the generic school? I'm not sure if you know this, but it's common in many schools to have field trips. If you ask the Simpsons, Bart and Lisa Simpson go on field trips all the fucking time. And if you're gonna say that it doesn't count since it's fiction, I can also tell you for a fact that I remember doing that in my elementary school. Amber stated that most lessons are taught in the field and not in the classroom because it's not common for you to go outside for your lessons. And it's not the same as field trips. Field trips are typically visits to particular institutions and learning sites for newer lessons or to commercial amusement places as a break from the school grind. And those are usually very well for schools. I mean, if you want to stretch, there's agriculture classes that take place in the field or in the classroom, but those are considered uncommon as well, so it doesn't really contribute to your point. Either way, we go back to you misinterpreting his words again, and this is getting rather tedious. Admittedly, there are a few moments where it does resemble a more stereotypical school structure, and those are the moments where it tends to be much less interesting. Alright, I will give you that. It's not like the typical school. But it doesn't make it any less fucking boring though. Thank you, Blaze, because you've completely disproved your earlier complaints this time. And now it just comes up as you being incredibly petty by just saying, well, it's still boring, with still no elaboration at all. Blaze, this is not how you persuade people to understand your side. This is actually going to annoy your audience. GG. The primary goal of Kukui's teachings appears to be informing Ash and the others of the world they live in and why the Pokemon in their ecosystem behave the way that they do. I don't watch the Pokemon anime to watch the Pokemon version of the Discovery Channel. I watch the Pokemon anime to be fucking excited. Now Pokemon battles, they are fucking exciting. Too bad there are barely any in the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. Blaze, I have no idea how you can be a Pokemon fan and not care about the Pokemon. Because that's what this interjection comes off as. It genuinely sounds like you find world building bad. Not to say that's a bad thing, but it certainly can be rather disheartening. And how can one even find enjoyment in battles involving things you don't care to know about? It sounds like you have some rather skewed priorities. If I could add in a new argument, and shout out to Bowser to actually help me find the right words for this. Cool, you watch the anime for some hot battling. That doesn't mean that's Pokemon's main aspect. The anime also tries to give focus to the characters and the Pokemon themselves. The anime can't really have back-to-back -back battling as it could with a massive burnout. And I bet my bottom dollar that the earlier seasons of the anime won't just focus on battling. The battle ratio may have been larger, and perhaps your problem with Sun and Moon is that there was less battles, but simply blurring out that you watch Pokemon for the battles seems to ignore that the anime focuses on more than just battling. There's nothing wrong with wanting to watch the Pokemon Discovery Channel. Some would even say they find it interesting. Also, Blaze, are you going to add some type of substance to whenever you decide to peel your onion in front of me? Yeah, yeah, dope time I brought it up. It's just a recording issue that makes the video all the more uninteresting. And how many of you would honestly not bat an eye if I was to just say this annoying thing happens a lot and then not show that happening at all? That aside, don't worry, I'll avoid bringing it up as I feel the point has been made clear by now. <laughs> Team Rocket in Sun and Moon has deviated almost entirely from their usual plans of steal Pikachu and maybe some other Pokemon. They get hyped catching their own personal partners, sell donuts on the side, harkening back to when they would sell fake memorabilia during the Pokemon League, forge relationships with other people and Pokemon in their region, and end up having their own set of goals that have nothing to do with Team Rocket proper, but everything to do with what these three want to do. I find the donut stand to be an especially fascinating example of how much these three have grown. When they sold fake merch during the Pokemon League, they did it because they wanted to make more money to expand on their schemes, and also because they were usually poor. The donut stand, meanwhile, doesn't seem to be monetarily motivated, at least not solely so, especially because I'm pretty sure they haven't sold a single donut yet. Yes, they think it will bring in money, but not because they see it as a get-rich-quick scheme. While it's not stated directly, using the honey Kitaruguma gathered as a glaze for the donuts comes from the fact that they genuinely love the taste of that honey, and so they think that other people will love it and spend money on it. They are still criminals. The fact that they do a few good deeds doesn't change that. Also, aren't you forgetting something? The fact that they did a few good deeds before Pokemon Sun and Moon as well. I mean sure, the bad things they did do overweight the good things they did. 
but the good deeds in earlier seasons are still worth considering. So we've come back to arguments that don't matter in the slightest. Your point of them still being criminals is worthless because the implication that they weren't anymore was never stated. I mean, Ember said they deviated from that somewhat, but that's not saying they aren't that anymore. Now, as for your second argument, um, no. The way Ember seems to be describing the Rocket Trio is implying that they seem to be more laid back, less mischievous, and much more grounded than in earlier seasons. It goes beyond just them doing good deeds that may have been done out of them looking to line their pockets or contribute to their own schemes, if what Ember has said is to go by. Or to touch on the example you give for your point. There are many times when us and friends are lost and the members of Team Rocket are lost as well. And in those episodes, they get to work together. Which comes up as them doing it out of obligation and survival. Unless there's an instance where you can show their feelings in Sun and Moon aren't genuine, this argument comes off as you just misunderstanding character development. Hmm, that's strange how come we don't recognize this guy at all. I mean I have watched every single episode of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime. Though, to be fair, I watched the American dub, not the original Japanese version. So that might be why. This joke could have worked if you didn't set us through the entirety of Ember's explanation of Nanu to get to it. By the way, this guy is called Nanu in the English games. Ember can be asked to remember to call him Nanu at least though, because fuck consistency. Then again, that's under the impression you are trying to joke around. Honestly, with how you sound no different in this instance from anything else, and particular patterns within this video that we will be touching on, I wouldn't be shocked if this was just another meaningless interjection that set us through a rather extensive segment for you to just point out that Nanu hasn't been seen in the English dub of the anime. Which he likely knows as it's common for the Japanese dubs of anime that originate from Japan to be ahead of the English dubs. So now we either have a meaningless point that adds nothing, or a joke that falls completely flat due to a lack of energy or timing. Then there's the case of Lily's mother, Lusumine. Much like the games, Lusumine falls squarely into the bad mom archetype. However, the anime's version is much more complex and conflicted. Lusumine is definitely not a rival trading type in any regard. She really does love Lily and Lazio and cares deeply for them. This overly affectionate attitude isn't a front to tie the darker side. It's a genuine emotion that she's compelled to express whenever she actually gets to be with her children. This might have been a good story. I don't know. Honestly, by that point in the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, I was too fucking bored to care. Then why are you in my face? Didn't you have no problem skipping through the video to cover points you wanted to address? What happened to that? Actually, you still are doing that. You skipped nearly three minutes of Ember's video for us to get to this point. What did you think this would add? I didn't care about how you were bored of the anime at the beginning of your video. Why do I need to be reminded about it 16 minutes later? Wake me up. Wake me up inside. I can't wake up. Wake me up inside. Save me. Call my name and save me from the dark. Wake me up. Get my blood to run. I can't wake up before I come undone. Save me. Save me from the nothing. Guys, the um. The movies have dabbled in this quite a bit, but it's almost always in an action movie context where death is a sacrifice to allow others to live. Which is fine, but not exactly revolutionary, even in children's media. So wait a minute, are you implying that it doesn't count, since it isn't anything revolutionary? I'm sorry, but if that's the case, that's fucking dumb. Just because something is common in media, doesn't make it bad. Lovely new straw man you constructed. What did Ember say these action movie contextual deaths were bad? All he said was that they were common, and even called them fine for what they were. Now if you would allow me to play some contents for my point, one such an I skipped and one such an that plays will skip. The idea of death has never really been a tangible thing in the Pokemon TV series. Sure, there were plenty of situations where people where Pokemon almost died, but until now there has never been an on-screen or even in-episode death in the TV series. There have also been examples of deaths that occurred in the past that the characters have already gotten over, which again is fine, but isn't really anything out of the ordinary. This tells me that the setup here was to specify what Embo is going for when he says Spokeman has never used the concept of death in a tangible form, meaning that it had never impacted the story in real time. There's never really been grounded struggle with, like, say, the grieving process, or it seems as if characters had ever been affected by it. All you've done with this interjection is hyper-focus on one thing he said, and tossed in the most negative intent to make an argument, which never Never looks good. Ever. So, let's talk about Lytton and Stoutland. How about no, because there's an issue that needs to be addressed. This is probably something you've caught on to considering how my commentary has been edited, but the pacing for Blaze's video has been dreadful. Blaze, you keep in a lot of contents you don't end up addressing, and it drags your video out tremendously. I have no problem with your contents being something like two minutes, so long as everything in it is necessary for your point. But if it's not, we'll love a bunch of useless info that progressively makes this commentary a shorter sit-through. I already touched on this earlier, but your segment... 
not addressing his explanation on Nanu, and this segment here was even worse. For nearly two minutes, Ember goes on over a story arc revolving around the death of an old stoutling. It's deep, compelling, tragic, whatever. Now, we sit through the entire segment to see what Blaze has to say about it, and what do we get? Alright, I will give you that. That story arc in the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime is fucking awesome. In fact, it's one of the few things of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime that I actually like. It really is sad to see that poor Stoutland die. Nothing. Just nothing. What exactly does this add to your video? How does this help or inform anyone? This is just unneeded padding that could have been cut out completely with nothing lost. What is the difference between this and anything else you skip without informing us? Do you know that we commentators usually skip stuff because there's nothing to talk about or add within them? Please do that more often. Speaking of that, that's what I can do. Your last two interjections have no substance either and your final thoughts are just... Dale. So I'll just go to mine. Now, Blaze, you wanted me to look into this video to see why it wasn't well received and there was sadly quite a bit to work with. You misinterpreted a lot of what Ember said, made a bunch of invalid points, cut him with interjections that did nothing, and it kind of feels like you didn't really understand Ember's compliments for the show. I mean, maybe you just want to say that the direction isn't your particular cup of chocolate milk. And that's understandable, but that doesn't come across well when you try shooting down most of what Sun and Moon is trying to do by saying, well it's still boring, even going as far as saying that it's overweighted. But in my opinion, the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime is extremely fucking overrated. I honestly don't see the appeal of it, but that's just me. I think you need to try to look into things a little bit more nuanced. Try understanding particular concepts and ideas so you can see why one would like something you don't. Because they can't have good reason for that. For production, try to inform us when you skip around in the video, or just show the time sense of what you cover, whatever is easier to you. Try to recognize how you deliver context and what you need and don't need. I really hope this pacing isn't an ordinary occurrence for you. Fast forward points if you need to, if you feel it drags. Just make sure it's understandable. That should be it for you, Blaze. I may not follow your content a whole lot, but I do hope things work out well for you, as a fellow commentator and friend. Now, that was fun and all, but I'm still behind and I got more to backlog to tend to. So, see you all later, hopefully soon. Have a nice day. And that was all he wrote. What you think? I thought it was fun. But why do you dislike it so much? It didn't seem like it had flagrant errors. Oh, the video itself was okay, if just a bit standard. But it being named the 11th episode was a huge mistake that caused more harm than good. At least to me and the number one of this series. I see. But why did you wish to share this with me all of a sudden? Well, Matt, it's important we take a step back and look at our shortcomings in life every so often to improve ourselves as an individual and a collective of like-minded people. You're using this as an excuse to fix your timeline. Listen here, Obato Obato. Being so smart isn't such a good thing. It can make you a bit of a jerk. Are you still upset about missing out on the chain? Hey, you are, you fellow people!